May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It might not come as very much of a surprise to you that I'm a bit of a foodie. I've no idea why you're laughing. But I am. I really enjoy my food. So I have great sympathy indeed with the people of Israel. Moses had a wonderful idea inspired by God. Get the people out of, of Egypt. Get the people out of their slavery. Unfortunately, Moses wasn't very good at the bit of organizing things. So off they set doing God's will, only to find that somebody had said that they should make camp in a place where there was no water. I don't think I would want to go with the pilgrimage organizer that got me to a place where there was no water. And so what did they do? They quarreled with Moses. In other parts of the Bible, we hear about them murmuring. I've talked about murmuring before from this pulpit, the lovely idea that you see people after church or after a PCC meeting murmuring. They're murmuring about the preacher. They're murmuring about the dean's length of notices. They're murmuring about all sorts of things. They're murmuring about the quality of the coffee. And so it goes on, murmuring. And Moses, in a way, loses his rag. He says to God, what am I supposed to do? And God, in a wonderful, laid-back sort of way, tells him precisely what to do. Go over there, take your stick with you, hit the rock, and the water will come out. And the water did exactly that. Remember, too, the other bit about food and the journey. The people suddenly discovered that there was no food, and so again they murmured. And Moses again had to ask God, what do I do now? And God says, okay, I'll send manna from heaven and I'll send quails. But remember, the manna doesn't last. And it's the manna not lasting. It's the non-lasting bit of all this food which is at the heart of today's gospel reading. For your benefit, I cut about 40 verses out of the Gospel reading because it was rather long. But for those of you who remember, the first bit of the story is about Jesus talking to the Samaritan woman, asking her to give him a drink. He's talking about living water. She's talking about a well. And they have a wonderful conversation which is completely at cross-purposes. They don't actually connect at all in their conversation. Her desire is for earthly thirst to be quenched. The people of Israel needed their earthly hunger to be quenched. But that's not what this story is actually about. This story is about Jesus and what he sees as true bread everything that feeds him. And he says, My food is to do the will of him that sent me. My food is to do the will of him who sent me. I don't know how your Lent is going. My Lent is alcohol-free. It's an odd feeling, and I tend to get stuck at the level of alcohol free. I don't get beyond that into what the whole thing should actually be about, which is about my relationship with God. I get stuck with my relationship with my overweightness and therefore my need to lose weight by giving up alcohol for Lent. And I bet many of us actually get stuck at that earthly level when we deal with our Lenten observances, when we deal, in fact, with our faith, 
We get stuck at the level that those people of Israel got stuck at. Stuck at. I'm hungry and I'm thirsty. What are you going to do about it? Forgetting that the whole reason for them being on a journey was that they should have a new life in a promised land. That's what the journey was actually about. My Lenten journey is about where I am in my faith, but I lose sight of it. I get stuck with what I've decided to do for Lent. It should be much more positive, but I fail. It doesn't quite work that way. When you read this morning's Gospel, there was a slight feeling that perhaps John was putting together various bits of stories and sort of linking them all up in order to make one story. Because suddenly, after hearing about food, we hear about harvest. And he says to his, his disciples, the harvest is ready. So what's this about? How are we to face this? This is about judgment. In the New Testament, the notion of harvest was about judgment, gathering in the harvest. And Jesus is actually saying to his disciples, you can't put this thing off. And very often we do that with judgment. We like to think of it as being out there somewhere. I'll deal with judgment when I die. I'll deal with judgment when I'm facing God face to face. But Jesus is actually saying to them, no, judgment is here and now. I am judgment. I have come into the world to judge the world. You have to do something about it now, because the harvest is ready. Again, we like to push the thing gently away. It's too difficult to think about just like my Lenten observance. There's, yes, I believe in judgment. I think it's a really good idea, judgment. But let's not think about it quite now. Let's think about it later. I'll do something about judgment when I've just got a bit older. When is old? I could stop there and say that if you listen to the wireless radio, you'll have been told that 70 is old. So all put up your hands who are now old. No, I don't think we will, thank you. <laughs> but not to put off judgment. Not to put off that dreadful day. So our readings today are quite subtle, and what more could we expect when we are dealing with John's Gospel? That whole business of where John is taking us. He is taking us right back to the roots of our faith, right back to how we should behave as men and women of faith, how it actually affects day-to-day -day life. Remember George Herbert's line, seven whole days, not one in seven, I will praise thee. It's supposed to be about every single moment of our earthly existence being in the praise of God. My food is to do the will of him that sent me. Our food is to do the will of him who sends us. Remember your baptism and your confirmation promises. Those wonderful verbs, turning, repenting. Make sure you're doing that during Lent. Make sure your eyes are fixed not on the earthly stuff, not on the easy stuff, but on the bit that's just a bit beyond the bit that's actually quite hard to deal with, the bit that we call faith. If we manage just to do that in this Lenten observance, then we will have gone some way to face the risen Christ who dies for us on a cross. Amen.